Hello everyone, this is Richard Cispedes and I'm here with the video to uh, talk about more about the spirituality and to uh, talk about um, specifically uh, the details of uh, what I, how I believe uh, the afterlife is, how you learn and how spirits um, enter your mind and in your dreams and uh, spirits physically can affect uh, the environment the waking life and reality that we live in but uh, they have more more flexibility and more ability uh, to uh, to uh, create uh, a whole new uh, reconstruction of a situation uh, when you're dreaming uh, they enter your mind your psyche your brain and your psyche while you're sleeping and I think that they enter it at a certain at REMS at uh, the REM sleep when you're um, deep, deep in sleeping, you know, you get those rapid eye movements. And when you're in that state, uh, your re dead relatives or friends or whatever will enter your dreams and, uh, and interact with you in this dream realm, you know, inside your psyche, inside your mind. And what they'll do is that they'll uh, create the dream. Uh, they'll create a situation that is uh, similar to what you used to do with them in the life when they were alive and they create a you know they change things up a little bit and and uh, they create the environment and the world in there and everything it's like they have more ability to manipulate and to interact more efficiently when they're in your dreams whenever you have dreams uh, sometimes your your dead relative or friend or family member or whatever uh, they tend to uh, uh, sometimes um, they tend to change the you know they act differently sometimes or they do something that's very unnaturally characteristically as themselves and so it kind of like puts you off a little bit you know and uh, you shouldn't worry about that because it's not really who they are what it is what I think is going on is that uh, your psyche because you're in your body your the your body is an anchor, and your brain, your psyche, is uh, you're you're taking over your dream. You're taking over control over the spirits' uh, intentions and what they're trying to do. And it's because they're in your mind, and so you have more power uh, subconsciously, not intentionally, but subconsciously. Uh, you kind of add different uh, twists to the personalities and characteristics of your relative, dead relative, your spirit relative. And so they just kind of let it go, you know? And so your mind kind of takes over the, the vehicle that they constructed for you. And, uh, and subconsciously and unconsciously, you kind of like just, you just take, take it over and you just kind of, uh, uh, your, your mind and your subconscious is just uh, messing around and playing around. You know, your, your relative, uh, may do something strange like maybe they, they never smoked ever but in the dream they were smoking cigarettes and that's just your your psyche and the mundane spiritual level clashing with the relaxed state of your dream of your dream uh, world and, and 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 it's just the constant uh, struggle with your life of your mundane interacting and living and waking life and the combination of all those things and subconscious and everything and your psyche and your ego and all this stuff that is created by the living brain and uh <clears throat> and and basically you know it, it happens just to, it's your subconscious and your mind um taking over so it's not that your dead relative is become evil or that they become more eccentric and strange or wild it's just that your subconscious and your body and the meat and the mundane living the enlightened level of a mundane spiritual level of a mundane is a is a state that's very flexible and bendable so it could be very positive and very negative or it could be right in the middle or or anywhere and so within that state the dream it kind of takes over and makes it negative you know depends on your mood or something like that and I wanted to also talk about uh, <clears throat> Um, how you learn in the spirit world 
when you when you pass away, uh, and it's very it's connected to telekinesis too. That's one thing I found out. When you pass away, uh, let's like for instance Albert Einstein, uh, when he was in the in the world, in the mundane state of living, with, anchored by his body, uh, he had to learn by observation and thinking, and and uh, the 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 knowledge just didn't come real easy. It, as it happens to all of us, we have to. We have to uh, write things down. We have to observe and listen, and we have to sit and ponder and let the information digest. And it's just because of the body, the body and the brain and the psyche is just like that sluggish. You know, unless you're meditating and relaxing and reaching higher levels of enlightenment, your mind opens up, your spirituality opens up, and it allows you to receive information more easily, like a flowing water stream. But the mundane level is uh, this is basically the basic level that allows you to to be able to learn in the and to direct your energy in the right places in intellect and physical and emotional in the right negative or positive where you want to go but anyways um because we're anchoring our bodies we have to learn you know we learn by writing things down we learn by observation and by having logic logic is also a conflict you know because uh you, uh, we don't allow ourselves to feel more. We have to have concrete, rigid, very rigid, straight to the arrow, straight down the line, logical writing and and making sense of nonsense. And so that's one thing that creates a one-dimensional form of knowledge. It's one-dimensional because it's not real knowledge. Knowledge is uh, more emotional, emotionally attaching. Uh, your intentions, your uh, the mystery, the mystery of yourself, uh, the nuances, uh, subtleties of of, uh, of living, uh, superstitions, and, and letting yourself just kind of go and guessing, guessing and letting go. That's what spirituality is. It isn't um, when when you pass away and you die, you don't uh, you gain knowledge in a different manner that is not the same as a living. You gain knowledge by just uh, of, uh, by just being, because when you pass away, you enter uh, the. Because I think that the spirit world lies within the quantum mechanics, the quantum level. Um, our spirit disperses and interconnects with the with the fabric of the quarks and, and quantum foam. It's it, and it interacts with all things. If everything's tethered. It interacts like a big web. And so when you enter this world of knowledge. Of this world of uh, the spiritual world, your mundane living body, your sensory suit, is no longer uh, blocking you and creating uh, conflict. So when you end, when you pass away, you're, you get you're gaining knowledge by again observing, but you're not writing things down, like numbers or writing sentences or nothing like that. You're gaining knowledge by uh, the connection of emotions of the spirits around you speaking to you and sometimes they don't speak to you verbally they speak to you more emotionally and so you gain knowledge by the emotions they send you by lifting uh, um, objects or touching spiritual liquids or gases or things like that they touch it and they feel and they show you and you're looking and observing and by feeling and seeing it becomes one whole thing that becomes a cohesive form of a of a, a form of a gaining and retaining knowledge it doesn't have to be verbal or written it's more emotional and visual is how they express uh, wisdom passing wisdom to you as a new person that has passed away and died you know and uh, that's how uh, the spirits learn they learn like that, just by observing and feeling and going, just letting go. And uh, it isn't, they, they don't use numbers, they don't use equations. Your brain already, when you gain knowledge, your brain, your, uh, the spiritual, I mean the spiritual body, you know, the entity of this ghost has passed away, uh, gains knowledge, it, it already constructs the mathematical. But it's not, it is not so apparent and it's not so, uh, um, it's not so abrupt, you know, it's more emotional, you know, it's, it's, it's feeling and seeing 
without speaking. That's he's gaining knowledge like that. That's how the spirits pass on knowledge to each other to teach you, you know, and uh, and basically, uh, and um, that's how the, you learn when you're dead uh, in the spiritual realm of the afterlife. That's how you learn, so that you can gain knowledge and get ready and go back into being in a physical body, being reincarnated, and maybe you'll do better that this time. That's how it is. And uh, the other thing too is that uh, the, the waking body, you know, pe people say when they pass away that when they look at the environment of the spiritual world, everything's more vivid, more sharp, bright. And the thing is though, that the reason why it's like that is because they're no longer in the sensory suit, the puppet suit that we use. They're out of it. And the reason, um, and uh, the, the sensory suit that we're in, the meat suit, the reason why we can't see things vividly is because everything is vivid. We see things sharply and as bright as, as it ever be. A spirit sees a cup, a red cup, as red and vivid as a living person. The reason why it's more brighter and more sharp and more dramatic is because they're, they're, they're no longer restrained by their emotional thoughts and their emotional uh, um, attachments to to thinking about worrying about bills or or vanity or or gluttony, worrying about uh, uh, people or situations or their health. You know, um, all those things are blockages to allow you to appreciate the vividness of how you see things now as a living. The body does that, and it's to teach you. You go to heaven. You go to heaven. It teaches you more better. And so, and so, um, it, everything that we see now is just as sharp as it's gonna be when we're dead. But when we see them now, the reason why we can't see things so clearly is because we we're too much in the judgment mentality, thinking, pondering, worrying mentality. When the spirit leaves the body. It no longer has the restraints and those uh, sorrows, so it looks at everything around it without judgment, without pondering or worrying. It sees it as, without judgment, just stares. It. it sees it as it is, and that's how you see. That's a emotional clarity, because vision isn't just about, uh, um, and the anatomy of the eye being visually seeing things clear. True clarity is the emotional state. And when your emotional state, your vision becomes more sharper and you appreciate your, the objects around you. So they become more vivid because you're allowing yourself to not be anchored by the problems that manifest in your life. So clarity isn't just about the anatomy of the vision of your eyes, the health of your eyes. Clarity is also in the combination of the emotional state and the balance of your, of your mundane living uh, body, the anchor of the enlightenment. You know, you come more enlightened, you allow yourself to open and see things more clearly. And the spirits see things just as clear as we do. We can see things just as clear as they do. The reason why people say when they die they see things more clear is because they're no longer anchored and restrained by their emotional problem when they were alive. Their visual state is clear. They have clarity because their emotional state is balanced, is no longer in the body. And when you enter the spirit world, the energy in the spirit world, you're in, the, in, a, in an ocean of complete balance, frequency of energy that's completely balanced. So you're, you're in this new body, which is an environment, an environment that's intertwined with you intertwined and fused with you. You are the space and time and you are and the space and time is you. So you're in this energy of fluctuation that's completely balanced all the time. And that's why you're always joyful and you see things clearly. And uh, that that's basically what it is. You know, the spiritual realm and everything else like that is uh, basically a, a emotional clarity, emotional balance. And those are the things I just want to talk about.